The eradication of smallpox was one of the greatest achievements in human health and public health history. But of course, it's left the world uh, without immunity to pox viruses. So it's not surprising to start to see more cases occur when people are exposed. Monkeypox is a misnomer. First discovered in the late 1950s when pox-like outbreaks occurred in monkeys kept for research. But monkeys aren't the source. The host species isn't yet known, though it's thought rodents play a role. After an incubation period of usually one to two weeks, the disease starts with fever, muscle aches, fatigue, and other flu-like symptoms. Monkeypox transmission usually occurs uh, with just human to human uh, contact transmission or large droplets, but those droplets are large. You'd have to be in pretty close proximity. This is not something that is airborne or, or um, aerosolized. It really is just supportive care, symptomatic treatment, and you know, really importantly, isolation of the patient so that we don't see onward transmission. There are two different clades of monkeypox. So there's the Central African clade, which is uh, more transmissible and more virulent, is associated with a case fatality rate of about 10%, versus the West African clade, which is what we're seeing circulate in populations and being imported from West Africa, which is associated with a much lower fatality rate, about 1% or less than 1% of cases. The cases of monkeypox that have been identified in the Western Hemisphere in high resource settings have not been associated with a high rate of mortality, and that probably has to do with very good supportive care. Right now, we don't have an answer to this, um, and it's going to be very important to, to learn how this virus is going to work and operate, transmit, present itself now that it's in a different population and has opportunity to spread. We do need to be always getting in front of these viruses instead of chasing behind it. Mm -hmm.